it is because the science is just so new. It's new, but at the same time, it validates some of the uh, inconsistencies that people have been getting as far as uh, the, the effect of soy and soy protein. Um, we were talking about cholesterol. You know, the cholesterol, uh, lunacin is the active ingredient in soy protein that's responsible for cholesterol lowering. That's a given. I mean, people are, so are impressed with that. But even beyond that, because most of the research on lunacy is actually on cancer, right? And, and there's a lot of uh, research done by other universities, other research institutions, and it validated the original hypothesis that I came up with way back in 1996, that this peptide that I isolated in, 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 soybean, in soybean seeds actually has the potential to have all these health benefits. And as a result, uh, just, uh, just this week, I, was, uh, I met with a couple of uh, big time researchers at UC Davis. One is the department chair, uh, at the, the chairman of the Department of Nutrition at UC Davis. And they're doing a lot of uh, clinical research on um, food ingredients, in, including uh, isoflavones from soy. But they're sort of uh, frustrated with some of the results that they're getting. <laughs> and they couldn't explain some of the results either because it, there's some, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And that's usually the case with some of the soil research now. And when I talked to them about lunacin uh, just last Wednesday, they were all over it. I mean, they, they wanted to collaborate with me. <laughs> they were so excited to meet with me um, that actually we we're going to meet again next week. And they want me to test some of the uh, samples that they were using in their experiments because they think it's the lunacy that's causing the effect, the health effects that they're observing. So I said, well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take those with me. I'm, I'm going, to, uh, <laughs> going to Missouri next week, so I'll just uh, come by and, and pick the samples and we'll test it for you for free. But the, the objective really is to collaborate. They want me to collaborate with them. Um, to test all these health benefits, because there's there's so much uh, effects that we have to really test. And, and as a scientist, you know, it's okay to get those testimonials, but we really have to uh, verify and validate those results. And they're willing to do that for us, okay? And, the, you know, this, this is gonna be a very good collaboration because uh, not only with the Department of Nutrition, because there's also the Western Human Nutrition Center um, that is a U.S. Department of Agriculture uh, 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 institution. And that's the only one here in the Western United States. Western Human Nutrition Center. And I'm already collaborating with a researcher there. And the reason why I'm collaborating with her is when I was at UC Davis, uh, she heard about my research where we, um, I've identified uh, that lunacin is mimicking a tumor suppressor that's found in humans. You know what the tumor suppressor is? It suppresses tumors. It prevents uh, tumor formation, so essentially it prevents cancer. And lunacin is mimicking the effect of a human tumor suppressor. And she said that this is the first research that shows a dietary ingredient that mimics a known human tumor suppressor. That's totally unprecedented. unprecedented. And since I was leaving Bert, uh, Davis at that time, she said uh, she wants to continue that part of the research. And when you talk about researchers like that, they're hardcore scientists, I mean, molecular biologists. They literally do experiments where they, they you know, at the end of the day, when they're done with the research, you're absolutely sure whether it is or not. And so far, we're finishing up the experiments, by the way. Uh, hopefully within the next two months, we'll get the publication out, or get, get it submitted for publication. But this is the first indication of, of a dietary ingredient. We are not talking about curcumin or any other thing, uh, all, all these other potential uh, uh, cancer, anti-cancer ingredients from food, but soy, lunacin, mimicking human tumor suppressor. That's totally unprecedented. And that's in collaboration with the Human Nutrition Center at Bill uh, Davis, uh, which is a USDA uh, uh, institution. 
And, and then um, just yesterday, um, I met with the director of the UC Davis Cancer Center. The UC Davis Cancer Center, uh, the, 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 the chairman or the director, his name is Dr. Rob DeVille White. And he's been interested in losing even way back when I was at UC Davis because of the novel mechanism of action, right? But we never really got to do some uh, human, uh, uh, animal experiments. Part of it is because at that time we were using uh, synth the synthetic lunacin, your pure lunacin. And when you use that, you can really use it for human consumption because it just degrades and the, the bioactivity gets lost. And so um, until we were able to develop uh, a lunacin, um, a lunar rich X, which is something that you can take in and still uh, make it bioavailable inside the system, that's when they're, now they're interested in doing research with us. And our talks yesterday uh, was on clinical trials. Clinical trials of, of, of essentially lunar rich X. very excited about it is because um, I told them about the meeting I had. I actually presented, I had a webinar with a group of pediatric oncologists at uh, the Walter Reed General Hospital in Bethesda, Maryland, uh, including their nutritionist. Actually, their nutritionist was the one who recommended that these pediatric oncologists talk to me and I give a presentation. And the reason why they asked me for this uh, is because they were observing tremendous improvement in their patients. Um, these are kids with cancer, pediatric uh, oncologists. And they can't understand why it's doing that. Or at least with the, with the supplements that they were getting. So what is this lunacy? Why are they getting all these health benefits? Of course, they, they go to you know, the internet and whatnot. And, and part of I think the, my Facebook page, they look at it. But it, it's difficult to understand it without really the background. You know, so they, they wanted to talk to me about it. And they were sort of impressed. <laughs> sort of. Sort of. But they said, well, you know what? We can't really prescribe or, you know, uh, give recommendations until you actual, actually do clinical trials on it. And I agree. You know, that's the only way we can can really uh, provide it. Besides, if you're talking about cancer, FDA won't approve anything on, on a cancer claim. Wow. Even if you say cancer preventive, you really have to have a rigorous clinical trials on this. And so um, that's what they suggested. And then, of course, all these uh, doctors from people uh, who were getting all these health benefits associated with, with lunar rich eggs and the, 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 the really uh, lunar rich uh, soy powders. And uh, in fact, I think I have another meeting, uh, I think, I, yeah, next week, with another oncologist in, in the Bay Area. So there are a lot of people, it's not the, med it's the medical establishment, uh, you know, are suddenly starting to notice about Lunarich, and it's because their patients are getting better. <laughs> they somehow need to learn more about this because, it, you know, it's helping their patients. And that's the bottom line for these doctors. They want to provide the best care for their patients. And, and if losing is produced, it's giving them that uh, uh, benefit. You know, we need to study more about it. So I went to uh, Dr. DeVere's wife's office yesterday, and uh, he was so glad. I was like, thank you for remembering us. <laughs> because, uh, you know, I used to work with the he used to come to our uh, uh, Center for Nutritional Genomics when he learned about Ludison in the last five years ago. And so, uh, you know, it never really materialized because we didn't get uh, a renewal for our funding for the center. But after I talked to him yesterday, he, he was so glad that we're sort of revisiting this and, and the fact that we have already uh, produced a product that makes Ludison more viable. And then another thing, and then just to you know uh, finish my talk here and how excited I am about uh, Lunacin right now, uh, director of the National Institutes of Health, you know, you know NIH, the top uh, institution in the country that, that deals with with uh, uh, with our health. Um, one of the directors.
director is the director of the Minority Health and uh, Health Disparities. Uh, just uh, last month, he emailed me and he said, "Fred, I want you. I want to nominate you for uh, uh, one of the outstanding alumni for the University of the Philippines, where I graduated. He's also from the University of the Philippines, and this guy is the director of the National Institute of Health." And to me, I was like, "Whoa!" Well, ironically, he is the one who actually rejected. <laughs> renewal of our center's uh, uh, grant, mm -hmm. but he's aware of my research, and, and, and in fact, I think that's one of the reasons why he rejected our, our center, because the center didn't emphasize epigenetics. They were still emphasizing the old, you know, gene disease paradigm, but he's aware of my research, and I, I have a couple of uh, pilot uh, grants to the center where they actually approved Grant. So anyway, uh, that's one thing that I wanted to pursue with the Center for the, uh, with the Louis Platt Science Center is to, to, to uh, expand on nutritional epigenomics because they realize that I mean, that means the National Institutes of Health, despite the fact that 90% of the research grant is still based on the genesis paradigm, that 10% is now realizing epigenetics is the way to go. Hey. As far as that. So, within, for the next five to ten years, this is going to take off. And you guys, you guys, it's still, it's still in that, you know, sometimes we call it an inflection point when it goes up. It's still in that early phase. And that's when you get it. Because by the time it shoots up, that's when everybody is happy. Okay? So, you're in the right place at the right time.